Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. February 5th, 2021. It's 9.30 a.m. Right now, either you're listening to 93.5 FM WVIP or you're streaming live to our Facebook platform. But uh, no matter what you're doing or how you're watching or listening to us, uh, there's one thing I know for sure. You are officially cruising. Well, it shouldn't be that. It should be cruising with the case handler. Uh, my name is Adam Handler. I'm your boy. I'm a partner of Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. I head up the personal injury department here. Uh, we have, uh, who we got on today? We got two of my partners, uh, Conrad Pollock, we call him the maestro. We got uh, Nelson Madrid, we call him the maverick. We got our associate, Andrea Scher, we call her Shira. Uh, wonderful attorneys that handle the immigration. I handle the personal injury, of course, with my associate, Matt Goodstein. And we're here to let you know who we are, what we do, and how we do it. Uh, before we get started, though, we have to acknowledge, of course, that it's Friday. Hopefully, for many of you out there, it is payday, right? You know, Johnny Kemp has a song, Friday Just Got Paid, Money in My Pocket. I'm feeling all right. So hopefully, uh, your wallet's a little fatter today. But uh, more importantly, uh, a very, very special day to celebrate uh, the king, the man that certainly showed me. Uh, you know, listen, I grew up in suburbia, uh, New Jersey, right? I, I didn't know a Jamaican uh, if they would have fallen on my lap, but I did know uh, one very, very famous Jamaican that has inspired me since probably I was 14 years old. You know, Big, big Bob, Big Bob right there. So happy birthday, Bob. Uh, you certainly showed me how a very, very small island in this world, a very, very small culture in this world can make a worldwide impact. So thank you for showing me that and certainly was uh, the gateway to uh, my embracing the Caribbean culture, my embracing the Jamaican culture, and of course, the culture embracing me back. So thank you so much. Happy birthday, Bob, uh, and to uh, all the Marley family out there. Uh, and uh, let's get into it. I have to jump off a little bit early today because I do have a big settlement conference on a case at 10 a.m., a pedestrian that was walking down the street. All of a sudden, a car backs into him, knocks him to the ground, has a right knee injury, right knee surgery. But again, never expected in a million years this would happen. You got to prepare for the unexpected. You got to know how to fight back when terrible things happen to you. And as long as you know we're out there, as long as you know that Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, Tosico, and the case handler are there for you and your family to fight, no matter what your immigration status is, you are one step ahead of the game. Our phone number is 844-774-3529, 844 844- Seven seven four three five two nine. Easy to remember. Eight four four P P I D law. P P I D is the initials of our firm. Pollock Pollock Isaac and Desico. Eight four four P P I D law. I'm down with P P I D. Nelson's down with P P I D. Conrad's down with P P I D. Andrea, you're down with P P I D, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Please. Last but not least, are you down with P P I D? Come on, you know me. I'm down with PPID. The question is, everybody. And of course they are. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Adam Handler. We're going to be talking a little bit with him about, of course, what it is that he has done for the past 15 years for the Caribbean community and beyond. I am the CEO of the Link Up Media Group of Companies. We have put the show together since the beginning of last year, and it has grown exponentially as far as viewers and listenership. And we're looking forward to doing a major show later on this evening at 6 p.m. It's called the PPID Virtual Law Forum, where we'll be focusing and speaking on the different capacities of the firm itself, which has been around for 60 solid years. And I must say I'm really looking forward to it. If you have not registered for it, if you'd like to be a part of it, also be in the runnings to win iPads, supplements, and finance options that I'm giving personally. Um, Make sure you go to eventbrite.com and uh, just type in PPID. That's it. Just go to eventbrite.com and type in PPID and register for free. All right. Adam's got the iPad. I know he's ready to give it away. So make sure you register eventbrite.com. And yes, you'll be able to see us. You'll be able, be able to be on Zoom. Join us. Raise your hand. Ask questions on uh, personal injury, immigration, family law, criminal defense, and much more business law, real estate a whole slew of different departments at the firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico based in New York City at 225 Broadway on the third floor and with offices in Brooklyn and Peekskill. With that said, I um, want to welcome the panel. want to say a pleasant good morning to the lady first. We've got Andrea. 
How are you feeling today, Andrea? Are you ready for this evening's major PPID Virgil Law Forum? I'm very excited. It's going to be great and a lot of fun. Okay. And let's check in with Maverick himself, Nelson Madrid, another partner at the firm. Are you ready for the forum, Mr. Maverick? I am always ready. <laughs> even listen, even when I'm not ready, I'm ready. You're born ready. Uh, you born ready. The Maverick man. And let's go to the managing partner, um, Mr. Conrad Pollock. Are you ready for the forum this evening? Of course. Always ready. I uh I recite this. I, I can recite immigration law in my sleep, as my uh, people in uh, at PPID will tell you. So, yes, I am ready. Uh, actually, I've never been with you while you're sleeping, so I will uh, say that's not true. But I think well, Nelson right. knows. Oh, Nelson. God. Nelson. See, this is a family <laughs> show here. This is a family show here. Come on. We got hilarious. All right. Listen, David, by the way, we've got some great, great, great news. Conrad, do you want to share that news? Uh, yeah, we've been talking about a gentleman, a uh, client of ours. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One thing. One correction. Today is not Bob Marley's birthday, um, Adam. Not? It came up on my calendar. I, I you know, it's tomorrow. <laughs> you know out. what? I'm looking at the wrong date. I'm looking at the 6th. <laughs> Boy, I get slammed, you know. All right. Just wanted to correct. I'm that. looking at the 6th. Oh, my God. You know what? Sorry about that. Can we air this tomorrow instead? Yeah, we'll, <laughs> yeah and then we'll pay, we'll, 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 we'll pay tribute on May 11th. I think that's the day. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's go to Conrad now. Conrad, nice, you... nice work there, Adam. Nice Sorry, work. brother. Um, anyway, uh, I lost my train of thought. We, um, we've been talking about a client of ours that um, for the last several months is a gentleman from um, – Southeast Asia, who uh, unfortunately had been detained and incarcerated, jailed by ICE. Um, uh, this is a gentleman who's been in the country for, I don't know, some 30 years. Uh, his family's here, wife, kids, one of his children, and these are minor children. Uh, one of his children, uh, all US citizens, by the way, uh, has a serious illness. Um, the whole family had COVID. Uh, even our client got hit with COVID while he was, while he was in jail. Uh, anyway, we've been trying for months upon months to get him out of jail. Uh, this, as some of you might be familiar. There were articles in, uh, in Newsday about this. Uh, there was a piece on WPIX Channel 11 about a month ago uh, where, where, again, we were talking about our efforts to get him out and how his family was suffering. He was a sole bread, breadwinner and, and, and so on. It was just really terrible, terrible situation and exemplary of what was going on under the Trump administration. Uh, God, well, I, I promised myself I wouldn't say that word anymore under the prior administration. Uh, anyway, uh, based upon the efforts of our team, and there have been four or five of us working on this nonstop for a long time, for months. Um, we finally got word from ICE yesterday. Uh, Nelson got a text after speaking with uh, various officers there. Uh, our client is being released on Monday. Um, wow. And um, yeah, uh, it's it, it, it's it was a lot of hard work, team effort, total team effort. Uh, uh, Nelson, me, Alan Kay, uh, Yizhou, everybody working on this case to make it happen. And again, he's being released on Monday uh, to his family. We just let the family know yesterday. And needless to say, they were you know, be beside themselves in terms of how happy they were. Kids haven't seen their dad in months. You know, it's, in fact, Nelson, what is it? It's almost a year. Yeah, right? in fact, he was in Louisiana at one point, because they were ready to send him back home. Several um, times about to deport him. That's Several right. Times. We filed multiple federal lawsuits. And, uh, you know, I I'd like to thank ICE for reconsidering their position and uh, giving this gentleman uh, another chance. Um, I'd like to add to that, by the way, um, he was represented by another attorney for about eight years. And he was actually taken into custody under that other attorney's watch. Um, the family hired PPID, and it was PPID who obviously made this happen. So, you know, shout out to my team. Uh, I'm happy and I'm glad to be a part of this team. And uh, again, I want to thank guys for reconsidering their position and giving this gentleman an opportunity to reunite with his family. Yeah, we've already been in touch with the media, and I'm sure he's going to, when he gets out, he's gonna, there's going to be another spot on television on Channel 11 that will... Uh, um, 
that we'll, we'll let everyone know here. So if they want to tune in. Um, and um, yeah, it's great news. You know, every so often we get, the, the firm gets one of these major, major victories. And this is one of them. You know, this is one that, you know, clearly will change the life trajectory of his family, uh, of this gentleman, of his kids, you know, and just, you know, it's unfortunate that we had to go through what we went through and what the family went through to, to get to this point. It really is unfortunate. And under the, uh, under the current administration, I don't think it would have happened. Certainly under the prior one, this is one of several stories similar so that with similar situations. Probably not all, in fact, I know all not with such happy endings where the person was deported, you know, and now the problem is getting him back, you know, but luckily we were able to forestall immigration from moving him uh, and um, he's getting out on Monday. So, you know, happy days. It's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> um, PPID has been around for 60 years and you guys have done tremendous things for people out there. You know, I, I do uh, applaud you all, um, the entire team for actually pulling together and making this happen. We need to see more of this happen. So I want to say good job, guys. Make sure you call PPID, folks, 844-774-3529. And one little thing, Conrad, seeing that you're the managing partner over there, if you can nudge the news network to, you know, somewhat mention PPID, it would be nice. It would be very, very nice, you know. I watched the last one and I wasn't very happy about that. Oh, listen, we're not in it. We're not in it for uh, self-promotion. You know, it, it's about changing lives. I know you're not, but at the same time, how many firms out there, Adam, could have done this? I mean, not, not many, not many. Um, so it's not something you hear very often, certainly yeah. under the previous administration, something you don't hear very often at all. Exactly. And, 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 and also uh, people, uh, you know, our clients will know that and, you know, listen, we obviously have a business to run, but the amount of work and the passion we put in is not always equal to the fee we receive. And we're, we're, we're really people first, money second. I mean, we have a business to run, but we are all practicing attorneys. I cannot stress that enough, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to attorneys on this station right now. You're listening to attorneys on this program right now that are the actual lawyers working on the case. There are no other lawyers right now on this station, or promoting on TV that are actually the attorneys working on your file. Sometimes they're even paid actors. You know, I see these commercials all the time for personal injury or disability. You don't see too many immigration lawyers promoting on TV, but it says pay, paid, you know, paid actor. You know, we are the real deal. We are the attorneys that handle the case. So even though we're on the radio promoting the firm, don't be fooled. When you come to us, we're not just passing your case off to somebody that you've never met before. If you want the maestro, you get the maestro. You want the maverick, you get the maverick. You want the case handler, you get the case handler. You want Shira, you get Shira. You want the boss lady, you get the boss lady. Maybe you want the scientist, you'll get the scientist. But we together work as a team and we do exceptional legal work. Of course, we are Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and this show. There you have it. And Adam, I'm gonna ask you uh, to drop a true success story on us right now, but uh, before that, once again, just want to remind everyone the number for the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the sequel, PPID, which deals in immigration and personal injury and other departments such as criminal defense, family law, and more, 844-774-3529. Uh, That's 844-774-3529. I'm asking everyone to tune in this evening, 6 p.m. on 93.5 FM, okay? One solid hour. OK, they are giving up their time to be with you guys. I'm giving up an hour. OK, so that you guys can be a part of this forum. So, ladies and gentlemen, join the forum, join the conversation, the PPID Law Forum by going to eventbrite.com and simply just type in PPID, click on register. Or you can click on the link that you're watching here on Facebook, the PPID page, the David Squeeze Anarchy's page, the case handler page, please. Register, join us, get your immigration questions answered. We'll have a few guests on the show. And of course, you can ask questions in other areas. I was speaking with Mr. Madrid yesterday, one of our top attorneys here. And I said, hey, gear up, man, because questions are going to be coming on family law. Questions are going to be coming on business law. Questions are going to be coming. They've already started rolling. And so we're looking forward to that this evening, 6 p.m. Eastern time on 93.5 and via Zoom and also on Facebook. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let me hand it over to Adam Handler. Adam Handler, it's all yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was hoping to have these individuals on tonight for the forum, but unfortunately they have uh, something else they got to take care of. I'm highlighting this case just because 
Listen, I like all my clients. I really, really, really like these people. This was a wonderful experience representing them. It was an impossible case that really turned out uh, amazingly, is that a word? Amazingly for them. So I, I'd like to share it. And uh, you know, this is a case, this is a, a mother and a son uh, that were in a car uh, driven by somebody else and the car hits an open manhole um, and they're all jarred up and, and tossed around in the vehicle. Now, there's two cases there. There's the case against the driver for not seeing the open manhole, but there's also a case against the city of New York for having the open manhole, right? Uh, when you sue the city of New York for a defect on the street or the sidewalk, you know, the chips are already stacked against you. Uh, there are very, very special laws that protect the city, um, the state, uh, the town uh, from liability in street and sidewalk defects. Essentially, you have to prove that they either created the condition, right, which is unlikely, uh, potholes or things like that, or you have to prove that they had prior written notice of the defect. So somebody calling 311 and saying, hey, there's a pothole, please patch it up. That doesn't count. You actually have to have somebody write a email or write a letter and send it to the city. It's the craziest law, but you know, it's the only way that, that the, the city feels that you know, they can protect themselves from unlimited liability because there's so many things wrong with it. So squeeze, how much do you think, how much money do you think I can get on an impossible case like that? What do you think? You're on mute, brother. Uh, no, 200,000, 100,000 there, between 100 and 200,000. You know what? If we weren't virtual right now, I would slap you. <laughs> you me right now? Look at that number right there, brother. Come on, read that oh number out loud. God. I wouldn't even come close to guessing that number. 1,697,500 dollars. That's some serious moolah that you got them, Adam. Yep, it broke down to 1.6 million for Ann and 97,500 for her son, Orion. And if you could read that quote for me, Squeeze, oh, uh, it would make my day. I mean, this is unbelievable, man. Unbelievable, I must say. Okay, it says, great service, on point from start to finish. It was really touching that Adam would call just to see how we were doing that day. Thank you, Adam Handler and his wonderful team. They represented us in a great way. Their team is the absolute best, and I recommend them to anyone. Anne and Orion from Hollis, New York. Yeah. You know, th this is, and, and we have pictures here. Uh, and this is why I really do stress, ladies and gentlemen, listening on 93.5 FM. We, we thank you for tuning in. We understand there's other things you could be listening to right now. But please, do your boy a favor on this Friday, right? Hopefully, like I said, you just got paid today. You're in a good mood. Do me a favor and check out the case handler on Instagram. Check out the case handler on Facebook. You'll see with your own eyes exactly what we're showing right now. These are pictures. So for example, you see the picture of us in court and that's in Queens County Supreme Court the day we settled it with the judge, right? You got uh, the middle picture, which shows actually the scene of the accident, a, a bystander to the accident, took a picture of the car and the open manhole. And then on the right, you see the new manhole that the city uh, installed. So the first one kept coming loose because uh, it was a circle and didn't have locks. They eventually fixed it. So this case not only won money for the clients, but this case actually changed the safety of the neighborhood to ensure that this would never happen again. That's the power of the work we do. And that's what we're really, really proud of here at Paul's Pollock Isaac Tico. So please, I don't like to beg, I don't like to grovel, but I'm begging you right now, check us out on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, check out your boy, the case handler, see for yourself exactly what we do. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Squeeze's word for it. Don't take the other DJs on this radio station that have endorsed me for nearly two decades. Don't take their word for it either. Take the word of those who unfortunately came into an accident, uh, regardless of their immigration status, got paid. And that's how we do it here. I'm going to sign off. I got work to do. The client is waiting. Uh, we got a 10 o'clock settlement conference. Hopefully that will be the next True Life success story. So you guys should tune in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you at 6 p.m. Don't forget to sign up for the forum, eventbrite.com. Search PPID. Win that iPad, all right? Do yourself a favor. Take care. Thank you so much for being here, Adam. See, they're always working. These attorneys are always working. Adam is off.
to another of his case. He's going to be speaking with one of his clients. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, just in case you're just joining us, this show is on immigration. It's on personal injury and more. Remember, this evening, 6 p.m. sharp, Eastern Standard Time, get in the runnings, win an iPad, maybe you can, and other um, products that we have and services here. Make sure you go to eventbrite.com and register. Just type in PPID, and that's it. With that said, let's see if um, Andrea have any updates for us on any capacity where immigration is concerned before we answer questions that's in the minefield immigration. We've got Nelson Madrid, one of the partners. We've got the managing partner, Conrad Pollock. And we have Andrea Shear, one of the attorneys. Do you have any updates for us in those cool glasses? I can't get over those. <laughs> Thank you. What's going on, you know? Um, yes, there's a few updates. I just wanted to point out one thing about the story that Conrad and Nelson were talking about, our client, that we were able to stop his deportation. Um, in the last few days, ICE has still been deporting people. And I just found, found it very interesting. Um, 15 people were deported to Jamaica and 269 people to Guatemala and Honduras in the last couple of days. So, I mean, if you look at the three countries, it's so interesting that those are the people that they've been deporting, um, but they're still scheduling them and it's still happening. So if you have a good lawyer and someone that will actually work really hard in your case, it could happen and you can be, um, released eventually um so another update yeah. just to jump in andrea and i'm, I'm sorry i'm interrupting no, it's fine. i want everyone to know that if i were in a position where i was put in removal proceedings let's say i was not a citizen and i was put in removal proceedings after spending one year with this brother nelson madrid okay he is the man i would want on my case and i'm i'm i, I kid you not people this is the reason. If you're in removal proceedings, you need one firm, PPID. You need one attorney, Nelson Madrid. Before you go elsewhere or you give up or you throw your hands up and say, that's it, call PPID, ask for Nelson. Anyone that's in any kind of removal proceedings, make sure you reach out to him. Ask for him by name, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I'm sorry I interrupted, Andre. You may proceed. Okay. Um, and then the other update, it was um, announced yesterday, which was very interesting too. It's for people with green cards that apply to um, renew their green cards. Usually when you apply, you have to wait for over a year before it's approved, or you have to go in person to immigration and get a stamp on your passport. So... USCIS is going to change that starting January 2021. And now instead of having to go and get a stamp or a sticker on your passport saying that you're, you're still in status, even though your renewal is pending, you're going to get a notice from immigration extending, you know, those green papers that they send you. Okay, so you're going to get one of those and it's going to be extending your green card star status while the renewal is pending. So it's it's helpful for people to have that now. That's good. You know, hopefully, hopefully they'll come quickly. You know, hopefully they won't have yeah. to, people won't have to wait months for the, to get those notices. Uh, but they're saying, well, within a week or two they'll be sending them. So time yeah. will tell. You know, look, squeeze it under the current administration. Look, I'm I'm cynical and skeptical to, uh, just by nature, having been in this business for thirty something years. But I am optimistic based on what we've seen so far from the Biden administration that they are actually going to be try to be true to their word and try to roll out things when they say. Uh, and as we've been saying, you know, most of the things coming out of the Biden administration are positive pro-immigration steps that are being taken as opposed to the reverse that used to occur on a daily basis almost uh, under the previous administration. So I'm sorry, Squeeze, you were going to say something. Uh, Nelson wanted to jump in there. Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, you know, something very important uh, in, in regards to this client who was just released. You know, I was brutally honest with his family at the very beginning. And I said, this is an extremely, extremely difficult case. Now, you know, obviously if you retain us, as I said to them, we will fight like hell. And we fought like hell, you know? And again, it wasn't one attorney, it wasn't two, it was four attorneys all working on one case. You know, so yes, it's a great story. Um, 
we did a lot of work, you know, and again, as Conrad said, it's something I'm personally very, very proud of and happy about. And also just, you know, again, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm uh, over, overdoing it with this theme, but you know, this is a guy who, he was not a criminal. The only thing that, the only blemish on his record with, was that he entered the United States unlawfully, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, I don't remember exactly the manner of entry, but he came in illegally. Um, no criminal records. He's been behaving himself, paid his taxes, was working. He was an Uber driver uh, most recently, uh, supporting his family, no public benefits, never collected welfare or food stamps or even public housing. Uh, yeah, th this is a guy who basically you know, brought, came to the United States seeking a better way of life for him, for his family, married a U.S. citizen, three U.S. citizen kids. Um, so it, this is a guy, you, you know, that if you live in New York, you, know, you, you'd see him, you know, drive, picking up, picking you up in his Uber and, you know, he's a decent man. Uh, immigration came in the middle of the night, right? In the middle of the night, I took him away, right? And left his family there and, and, and a seriously ill child. And it just, it, it just, it was a well, nightmare scenario. I can't well, even well, imagine. Hold on one second. Imagine. So. And this is this is what the previous administration, what ICE is capable of, right? And this was not this was not one of those situations where you would say, you know what, he got what was coming to him. Not at all. Go ahead, right. Nelson. But I, I think the bigger issue here, and it's something that we're not really focusing on, and we need to focus on. He was ordered deported. He had an attorney for close to ten years. Right. And he was on an order of supervision. The purpose of an order of supervision, they are giving you a chance. ICE is giving you a chance to fix your immigration issues. And because he hired, in my opinion, an incompetent attorney who did nothing, you know, who sat back. And, you know, I mean, if you're an experienced attorney, you know, 10 years on an order of supervision is extremely generous. You know, an order of supervision isn't supposed to last a lifetime or 20 years. So, you know, unfortunately, this gentleman was misguided by his attorney who, cl who clearly had no clue, you know, and that was one of the things that actually helped us because when I reached out to ICE, I said, listen, you know me and you know my law firm, you know, and I just got this case. There's a lot that can be done that has not been done. You know, and we've been working this case from every angle, which his prior attorney did not do. So this is a prime example of what can happen if you don't have competent legal representation. And I think that's what this is about. Before the top, 844-PPID-LAW, 844-PPID-LAW. That's 844-774-3529. Continue, um, Nelson. You are no, right. I I think, I think that's what this is really about because again, you know, look, ICE did their job, you know, and that was one of the issues I had with ICE initially was, which was, you know, Mr. Madrid, he had 10 years to do something and he did nothing. No, he did nothing because he was following his incompetent attorney's lead. Right. He believed in his incompetent attorney because you don't know that your attorney is incompetent because you're not an attorney, right? So you're under this false sense of confidence, right? Well, I got a lawyer. If there was a problem, my lawyer would tell me there was a problem. No, that is not always the case as we saw here. You know, and I think that's what made the case even more sympathetic because as Conrad said, this is a hardworking man, no criminal issues, you know, pays taxes, married to a citizen, has three citizen children. He was complying with the terms of his order of supervision. The problem is, the clock ran out and the quarterback never threw the ball. Yep. You know, you were down in the game and you never threw the ball. Got sacked. You know, you got sacked and the clock ran out, you know, and that's when we took over. And look, fortunately, you know, I mean, again, no prior results, you know, guarantee any future results. But, you know, something I tell all of my clients, listen, I don't play you know, for the fun or for the sport, I play to win. Okay. To me, there is nothing like winning. And maybe yeah. that's why, maybe that's why Conrad hired me, you know? Um, but ever since I was a kid, I play to win. To me, there's, there's no points for second place. Second place to me, you know, it's not first place. I'm with you.
I am with good you. news. And also, you know, don't forget, you know, again, we've been around a long time. So, you know, it, it wasn't just legal work here. You know, we got the media involved. The guy, the, it was, there was an article in Newsday. We had him on television. Yeah. You know, uh, he, he was interviewed on TV about this along with the family. Um, we had political pressure. You know, we went to, to, to Senator Schumer's office. We went to Senator Gillibrand's, Gillibrand's office. You know, we had local congressmen on this. So we brought a lot of pressure to bear on USCIS. Um, and, you know, you know, Nelson, you saw as soon as this thing showed on TV and they got a couple of letters from, from the senator's offices in New York, you know, they got to work on this. You know, so that certainly helped as well. It wasn't just us. It was using our contacts, many of which come from the, the general. You know, he's been around for 50 years, so he knows everybody. Um, and, um, yeah, it, it, it was, again, as I said, it was a team effort, a well, lot of different... As- a lot of different points we were hitting the government with. As you said, also, our contacts based on our years of experience, right? I mean, you know, if we were some slipshod or, or sloppy attorneys, we wouldn't be respected. This is true. You know, like like some of these lawyers you hear screaming on the radio, you know, come and, come and, come and use me. You know, I mean, that's not the way we, uh, the way we roll. You know, we, uh, we, we know what we're doing. And again, because of the years of experience we have, we have these contacts with the media, we have these contacts with the government, we have these contacts with politicians. And in situations like this, cases like this, it makes a difference. And don't necessarily take our word for it. When this gentleman is released, I'm sure once he's settled in, we're going to have him on the show and he can tell you himself as to what he went through and what we were able to accomplish. So, uh, you know, yes, we're tooting our own horn here, but you know something with good reason. This was a major victory. Uh, this is not the type of thing that you see on a daily basis, certainly uh, as a result of what was going on under the previous administration. And, um, you know, it feels good. It feels good. And we, we, we join in the, in, in the family's uh, good fortune right now and, and our happiness. I'm very, very happy. Literally giving me goose pimples knowing that this has happened and he's rejoining his family. So it's a great thing. Um, once again, folks, Cruise with a Case Handler, show on immigration and personal injury. The number to call is 844-774-3529. You may place more questions now in the WhatsApp group or on Facebook so we can get them answered by the attorneys. It's four minutes after the hour, but let's jump right into the immigration questions by you. It says here, I sponsored my dad for a green card and got it recently. If he decides to stay outside of the United States for up to a year, can he still retain his green card? I understand that this may not qualify him for citizenship, but he's not interested in citizenship at this point. We would just like to keep the green card. If he stays out of the country just like that for a year, he'll lose his green card. What he needs to do is come to the United States, apply for a reentry permit. Uh, you have to be here. You have to be in the U.S. physically to apply for a reentry permit. He applies, then he can leave. Uh, reentry permit will allow him to stay out of the country for continuously up to two years. All right, and 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 keep his green card. But without that reentry permit, if he stays out for more than a year, he'll lose that green card. Right. I, I see this question coming up a lot. And, and this is something that people may want to think about. And you see, I, I see a lot of people from Jamaica. They run into me and asking me that question. I said, tune into the program. And I guess this is one of them where they ask, I just want to get my green card and come back to Jamaica. So my question is, why do you want to get a green card if you just want to get it and go back to Jamaica? Why don't you just get a, a visitor's visa then? Yeah, so. so it's a lot of you, once they have the green card, it's a lot easier to come back and forth. Getting that tourist visa is not such an easy thing to get out of Kingston. That's why. Uh, but they're going to get in trouble with a green card if they stay out. Eventually. But if you get a reentry permit, that'll, that you can get it for two years. You can get it for another two years after that. So that'll solve their problem, certainly, you know, for a period of years. But you know, if they David. Become citizens, they can just come in and out whenever they want. They'll never have an issue. So. Yeah, well, sometimes people don't want to be citizens, they don't want to do the jury duty thing. You know, maybe, you know, they're young enough to, to be get selective service registration, things like that. They don't want to vote, you know, taxes, juries, you know, people sometimes don't want to do that. But the way to avoid losing your green card is by, as I said, don't stay out too long. Don't stay out ever more than six months at a time and get, get your reentry permit. Uh, you are saying, Nelson? Yeah, um, you're, you're right, actually. I've heard that question a lot. You know, and my question to them is always, why did you file for a green card? You know, you wasted time, you wasted money. You know, if you go back for a year or more, you're going to lose it and you're going to have to start the whole process over again. Do you really want to do that? And if not, you know, 
then why apply for a green card? You know, a lot I've of had, people, but a lot of people like to have that green card, especially, you know, depending on what country they're from. Maybe they're coming from a country with an unstable government. You know, maybe they're from uh, Somalia, you know, and they want to have the green card because the next time the government is overthrown, they can get out of there fast. They don't have to wait to get a visa, you know, and they can just come and get on the plane and come here. A lot of people do that. A lot of people use that green card as an insurance policy, you know, and again, get the reentry permit to maintain it. Uh, here's a, um, another one pertaining to a green card also. Can a green card holder apply for any health benefits here, even though he has never worked in the United States? A green card holder. I could answer that question, but I'll let you guys do it. Andrea, you're awfully quiet. Why don't you take that one? <laughs> well, yes, he should. He could, I mean. Yeah. He's a green card holder. He's entitled to any benefits that he can get. He's not subject to public charge or anything like that, so... Third question. My wife just got her green card through K1. And you gentlemen and lady can explain what that is. Yeah, um, AOS process. Her social security card has valid for work only with DHS authorization on it. Is there a process we're supposed to do next to remove that? I was trying to find something on the social security administration site. Couldn't find anything. She has a green card. She doesn't need the work authorization card anymore. Just use the green card. Toss the to toss the work authorization card. She doesn't need it. Just throw that out. All right. All right. And uh, here's a final question. I want to ask about tourist visa. I am interested in applying. Um, is it under the ban proclamation or is it a no. VQ F21? I don't understand. She applied for a green card and she applied for a tourist visa? Ev evidently. I am DQ. Oh, it's not, first of all, the, 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 the F21, that spouse of a permanent resident applying for the green card, she is subject to the ban, which hopefully the travel ban will be up in a couple of months, if, it's not, if not sooner. It expires March 31st, unless Biden um, terminates it prior to that. Uh, tourist visa, she's not going to get a tourist visa. She applied for a green card. They're not going to give it to her. Gotcha. There are a lot of reasons which I go into, but call us if you want the if you want the reasons. But the fact is, she's not getting the tourist visa. There you go. And you know, very very quickly. I'm sorry. Um, and I I just wanted to uh, expand on uh, something, Andrew, on that question actually that uh, the person had asked. Taking public benefits is not a problem. However, if you take a trip abroad and you return to the United States you could be found inadmissible on public charge grounds. That could potentially be a ground of inadmissibility. Um, and, you know, it's a nuance. I'm not saying it's something that will happen, but it's something that can happen. You know, we've said this on the show before, anytime someone is seeking to re-enter the United States, uh, he's seeking readmission. He's basically knocking at the door. Um, Again, depending on the CBP officer who is actually inspecting you, that could be a problem. I'm not saying it will be, but it can be. Okay. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I wanna say thanks to the attorneys, great show. As usual, we had the case handler, the man who is the partner at the firm and runs the personal injury department, Adam Handler, earlier with his true success story. And we have had three prominent attorneys here who have dealt with many immigration cases. I'm very proud of the one that we spoke about pretty much throughout the show. Great job, attorneys. Great job, PPID. Also want to remind you all this evening at 6 p.m. sharp, Eastern Standard Time, New York time, we will be doing the first PPID virtual law forum. We're asking you to register at eventbrite.com by typing in PPID in the search bar and just mm -hmm. clicking register. Or you can click the link that's on the page now and register for the forum this evening at 6 p.m. Bring your questions in every capacity of law. The attorneys here will actually be here to answer those questions. Any question that is not pertaining, pertaining to a capacity that they handle, they will point you in the right direction. Tune in, ladies and gentlemen. We'll also be on 93.5 FM if you can't join the eventbrite.com um, uh, site. And, uh, you know, we would love for you to be a part of it. Join the conversation, PPID, Virtual Law Forum. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Conrad. We'll catch up later on at 6 p.m. today. And share it, ladies and gentlemen. Share that event right link to everyone that you know. It's very important that we get questions answered, especially 
on Biden's executive orders, what's done, what's still here, what's gone, what's about to uh, go away, different changes in immigration. I pretty much want to push people naturalizing. We have not uh, said enough about that, but I personally will be pushing that. My guests will be pushing that. That's what they're all about. They're coming on board mostly to talk about, to push people to naturalize and use PPID for that naturalization process. It's very important. This show has done wonders for people within the community. So I want to keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, join the forum. Thank you. Also, Squeeze, before you sign off, you know, do I have a minute? Yeah, sure. Um, Just the things we've been talking about on the show every morning. And also one of the reasons we're doing this forum tonight is, is just is to alert people that if they're not already aware, which I think a lot of people are in the immigrant community, just to alert people, you know, that this is the Biden administration coming in, you know, last couple of weeks um, and taking over, you know, it, it's a changing of the guard. It, it really is. You know, people are so inured to the fact that, you know, these past four or five years, everything you hear about immigration, immigrants is negative, you know, they're criminals, they're rapists, they're this, they're that, they steal our money, they steal our jobs, they're, they're, they're storming the border. You know, all you ever hear is negative. That's all you ever hear. I mean, look, you know, one of the worst things that the government, that the previous administration did, they created a hotline, you know, like for like a crime hotline, you know, for if you, if you see something, you know, report it. They created a hotline for immigration, you know, that if you know somebody who's here illegally, call us and we'll go get them. I mean, it just... You know, maybe just things like that, just still to this day, I just can't fathom that something like that would happen in this country. But that is what the mentality has been for the last four or five years. And, you know, coming out of that now, you know, it's hard. You're thinking a certain way and you have a certain mindset and you hear the newspaper, you hear the radio and you see the newspapers day after day after day in television. Just you turn on Fox and all you see first thing is the, you know, illegal aliens climbing the walls and just yeah, that's that's all you hear and see so yeah that's what you're going to think it's just going to become normal and perpetual and that's the way it is it's not anymore you know the Biden administration is a legitimate sea change I've been doing this for a long time you know again Alan Kay has been doing this 50 60 70 years whatever it is you know I've been doing 30 something years Nelson's been doing 15 you know and, and, and you know we've seen a lot and yeah this is a major major event in them it's a seismic change in in immigration so yeah people need to realize that so if you've been hesitant you've been on the wall you've been on the fence you know about doing something applying for to change your status or get your citizenship or apply for your relative or get married and apply for your spouse you know who might be here illegally it's safe to do it now you don't have to have the same fear that you had previously you know and look the fear previously i'm not going to make light of it it's, it was legitimate you know because look we, we were just telling the story about our, our client who was locked, they, they came into, into his house in the middle of the night, lock him up, you know? And this guy had no criminal issues. There was nothing, he had done nothing except he entered the country illegally. Um, so those days are over. Now look, if you commit a crime, you're still gonna get in trouble, right? But for the average person out there, the average the, the, the immigrant that we see that is working, paying their taxes, just wants a better way of life, provide for their family, you know, it is safe for you to come out of the, come out of the shadows and apply for your green, your green card or for your visa or whatever it is. And there's a very good chance, better chance than we've seen in a long, long time about cha- the laws changing in a, in, in a positive, significant way. You know, so there's a lot of good stuff happening. And that's what we're, that's the overall message we're trying to get out. Uh, so, you know, tune in tonight, hear more about it, specifics. You need to actually open up once I introduce you along with Zena later on. You need to open up with that, Conrad. I think you need to rile the people up where that is concerned so they understand it is truly the changing of the guard and what does it mean. And then we can get into, of course, you know, speaking on the immigration um, bullets that we have to talk about later. Thank you so much for getting that in there. Remember, folks, register. Eventbrite.com. I believe it's going to be a great, great, great show. And I do believe we have the best possible law firm to be doing that. Not some screaming dude screaming at the top of the hour. Or, uh, it's, it's, no, no, it's, it's serious. I mean, you know, people need to understand. You know, you've got to prove yourself. You, you guys have a proven track record. You genuinely have helped people. We've seen it on television, major national uh, television network. And people need to understand or start realizing that it's not about going to the consultants or going to attorneys who are not actually going to go 
the distance. PPID will go the distance from what I have seen so far. And one of the greatest things is that if I do get a call from someone or a text from someone, I can actually reach out to the attorneys directly myself. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch up with you later on. Wow.